Welcome back to Hematite Homestead. We are going from rocket stove to barrel stove. We're going to build a barrel stove today and this barrel stove is going to have a specific unique purpose. Stick around and find out what that's going to be. This barrel stove is going to be a maple sap evaporator and it is blistering cold out here today i got a couple of things driving me to come out here and work in the cold and this number one uh maple sap sugar and season is right around the corner we'll be tapping trees in the next coming weeks and number two i just can't stand to sit around not doing anything so we're out here i got me a fire built back here to keep me warm and i got a camp stove kit for this barrel i bought this on amazon it's around 76 dollars, i think i'll put the link in the description and i got a barrel this was a discarded barrel that i acquired for zero dollars and while i'm talking about zero dollars i actually used a christmas gift certificate to buy this so so far i'm zero dollars in this build my maple sap evaporator right over here yeah, this is my pan it's uh two foot by two foot by one foot deep and it's uh roughly four cubic feet and it'll hold about 24 to 25 gallons of maple sap so let's get this thing built all right this is my uh camp stove kit uh like i said ball on amazon i think it's around 76 dollars let's open up this guy and see what's in here i got chickens don't want to go out in the cold either and they're in here making noise and whatnot so Bear with that. That's probably something you're used to hearing all the time while I'm making videos. Alright, so we have the two legs. A bolt kit. This is the damper. And there's supposed to be a damper collar in here. It's probably in here. This is the door. There's a the door, big heavy cast iron door. Okay, so let me get into here. I thought there was a separate collar that went with this that goes down in the burrow, but this must be it. They must be calling this a damper and this a damper collar. All right, so I talked about a couple things I've done just now. So I positioned the door where it's going to be. So the directions say to put the door where this gets cut out. But we're not going to do that. And I'll tell you why. Because I want to put air into here to assist in evaporating my maple syrup. And I want to use this as access point for that. So I kind of wiggled it around a little bit to where I want the door. I got the door where I want the door. And then I came around up here. And I drew me a straight line from here to here, here to here. I measured the outside, gave me uh, 20 and a half, I think it was. And then I measured and marked center of that. So then I took my feet square and set up here and made my center line and took my center line on down here. So that's going to be super critical when I cut my hole out from my pan. I want to cut equal distance from, from this center line on both sides. Okay, so an another thing I should point out is if, if you're trying to build a barrel stove for your camp stove, don't do what I'm doing. Follow the directions on the sheet. I'm building this specifically to put my maple evaporator pan in this thing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut the door out. And that's what the directions on the uh, box say. So I set the door on here, and hopefully you can see that. I traced the inside of the door out, and this is where the airflow goes. And then I went back with my speed square, and I squared off the ends. So I'm going to cut this with the 6-inch grinder. And everything I'm doing from this point on will reference from this 
line that I did here. So I did the center reference for my pan, and then when I put the legs in it, they also have to reference off of that line so that it sits nice and level. Because one critical thing about evaporating maple syrup in this pan is that you really got to have it level. Alright, so I'm going to cut this out with the grinder and I will be wearing a face shield during this process. Make sure if you're uh, cutting metal that you uh, do the same. So here we go. Alright, and there's the beginnings of a barrel stove. Alright, before I put the door on, I'm going to install the legs. And I started to sit on the ground and said, oh, I'll just level them out. But the ground's not level and lots of problems can come from that. So I extended my center line down and I measured this and marked the center of the leg. And then I took, this is called a wrap around. This is made for a pipe fitting. And it's going to be hard to do while holding the camera. And so I got my center line here. And I took the wrap around and I put it on here until I matched up my line. I think you can see that. And then I pulled it tight and I made my line all the way around the top. So that's where the first leg is going to go. All right, so I put the legs on the line and I matched up my center line on the legs and I'm just going to try and mark these holes here. All right, so I'm going to take my tape and measure from the top here to the center of the hole and from the side to the center of the hole and I'll just make me a little X right here where I'm going to have to do that at. All right, now that I got these secured in there a little bit. I got me a punch and I can mark my hole for this other one. Alright, I put the other leg on and I got a little bit off and got it off because this up here had a little tick on it. And I thought it was the mark I made for my center line, so I thought my center line was off, so I made that one to match it. And then when I stood back and looked at it, it wasn't the mark that I put on it. So I redid that one. I got a couple of holes down there, eighth inch holes where I'd already installed it. Uh, they'll be okay. We'll get those covered up. So now I'm going to put the door on it. Okay, so according to the directions on this uh, camp stove, the next thing you're supposed to do is put the flu on collar on here. We're not going to do that because I'm not sure the flu collar is going to be where I want it to be. So um, I'm going to cut my hole for my pan first, and I might have to cut a little bit, trim a little bit off of the flu collar to get it to fit in the space. So my pan is 24 inches, and I've Mark my center line here, and again, I'm using my wrap around, and I'm gonna start 20 inches. So I got 10 inch mark on my center line, and then uh, 10 inches on both sides of it. So I put the 10 inch right here, and then I marked both sides of the wrap around. And I'm gonna come back on over on this side and do that. So we'll measure, I'm gonna cut right on the inside of the beam here, the bead, and 24 inches puts me right here. I'll come down to my 10 inch marks and make another 24 inch line. Alright, so once again, I'll use my wrap around and I'll put it around this way where I can read it. And I'll, I'm going to put the 10 right on the line here and see if that comes up to what I measured down here. So I will draw my line there. 
this is the line down here. I don't know if you can see that. I, it's about two inches difference. And that's okay. I know that. So I'm going to start off here because once I cut away, I can't add metal back to it. So I'm going to start off here and cut this portion out. And if I want the pan to be deeper, then we'll take it down another inch or two. And this is the portion that we'll be cutting out. And it's, it's very important that the pan is in their level. And I can level it out with the feet to a certain degree. But I don't want this cut to be off with the center line from this cut. So i got to be really careful about that. Uh, something I did not account for, cut right into my barrel bead here and separated the bead from the front of the drum. I uh, hope that'll be okay, but my measurement's probably also going to be off because I'm 24 inches from here, not from here, and I don't think I'm going to sit in here. I might have to take a little bit more off on the back. All right, I was in the middle of recording and I realized my gimbal went dead and I didn't have a lot of footage. And then I went to charge it and guess what? The charge port is not even in this thing. It's gone. Brand new gimbal. Very disappointing. That'll be going back to Amazon. So here's what we got. I did go ahead and cut it down two more inches and that's as low as I can go because I'm right at the top of the bolts that hold the door in. So this is the evaporator pan sitting in the um, burn barrel. And I was pointing out, I didn't realize I wasn't recording, and I cut into the bead that holds the front cover on. I didn't realize that it went in as far as it did. But that's okay. I had to take a, another quarter inch off the back in order to fit the evaporator pan in here. And I'll just come by with some high temperature silicone and seal that in. I don't think it's gonna cause me any problems. So now I'm ready to put the flue on and I've center punched my hole for the flue and I have a six inch uh, hole saw. I'm going to try and punch a six inch hole through here and then we'll mount the flue on here. All right, there's my hole and to make sure the flue operates inside the hole. it does so now we'll drill and put a few bolts in here before I do that I'm gonna take the evaporate pan out so I can put the bolts in here all right I got it centered up I got two bolts in it right now and it works good in this location so I'm gonna go ahead and drill all these holes and uh, put all the bolts in it All right, and here's what it looks like on the inside. Here's the door. A little bit of oil residue in there, that's okay. For the airflow down here. And then here's what the damper and flue collar look like. Now there's the holes I told you about earlier. I got in it by mistake, that's okay. I'm not worried about those. So let's set the evaporator pan in here and see what we got.
All right, the directions on the box for this uh, barrel stove say to put two inches of sand in it. We are not going to do that because I'm going to line it with fire brick. Uh, I don't have any fire brick today. I don't have my flue pipe. So this is as far as we go today. Uh, thanks so much for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, next time we'll put this thing into action, we'll line it with some fire brick. And we'll put some water in this pan and give it a good old test run. So hit that subscribe button and thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, stay tuned for, for more on this uh, maple evaporator barrel stove cooker.